Hi guys, welcome to episode 18 of Get Your Buzz On. I have special guests, Carla Smith, Chastity Rosales, and I'm really excited because these girls are straight crazy. So we are gonna have, I'm like, I'm just being honest. I'm like, if you wanna be entertained, just listen to these two fools and, we'll, and you guys will have fun. <laughs> Yeah, that's what they say. People love to, either people love to be at the conversation with us or they feel uncomfortable being in a conversation. Oh, I don't feel comfortable. I'm like, <laughs> bring it on. It's hilarious. And so, we got our favorite beer. We're not bubbles. We're not bubble girls. So, uh, cheers. cheers. So, this is vanilla porter. I'm like, these girls had to be extra as hell because I had to literally drive to Albertsons to get. I'm sorry. I they was said it was Albertsons that had it and you didn't have to go to what's that place at the fountains? The, the special wine, wine. Yeah, yeah, total wine. wine, which I'm addicted to. Me yeah. too. It's I'm a like, great place. $187 every time I go there. <laughs> 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 what points do I have? Oh, I try this, I want to try that. Well, and, you know what I think I like it too is when you go in, um, they know about the product. So yes. it makes you say, oh, I yes. love that. I hate when I go to a restaurant and you're like, okay, what do you, what would you recommend? And they're like, well, everything's good. No, no everything's not freaking no. good. You need to like say, hey, this pairs well with this. And mm -hmm. it helps them sell better too because you're like, okay, well, I like something sweet, but I like this. Absolutely. Or the tequila yeah. and the vodka. It, and I think it that's why it does so well is they have really yeah. competent people that yeah. say, hey, I if you like this cup vodka, why don't you try this? Because mm -hmm. I would never know. Which yeah, I exactly. Agree. I agree. Um, we went in there the other day and I like gin and tonic. Uh huh. And they have the, all these different kind of tonics. It's yeah. Brand. And then he was like, "If you love tonic, he said, then you got to try this brand." He was like, "My wife hates tonic, but she loves this." Huh. And it's Esme, E S M E. Hmm. Um, it was amazing. Like Esme uh, gin. I'm um, gonna try that. I'm yeah, not a gin. I, I'm not a gin. gin yeah. It was so smooth and good because Tanqueray kind of tastes like. You know, Snoop Dogg. That was my high school and college drink. Okay? Yes. <laughs> Everybody drank Hennessy and Tangeray. And now you're like, why do people drink Tangeray and tonic? Yeah. I mean, you know, Tangeray or, or Hennessy. I mean, I know Hennessy's expensive, but Hennessy's not that great. I don't like it uh -uh. at no. all. I'm a weak. I'm a weekly. I'm Me like, too. I'm Me like too. Champagne. I can't even drink wine that much because it gives me such a. Bad oh, mood. wine is the best. Oh, so at, well, okay. So speaking of that, at, at that place, Wine Attitude, they have this little stick you can for people like you because you get sick off of the tannins or yeah. the headaches off of some of the um not sulfates. Yeah. And everything. Yeah. So it removes the sulfate, so you can drink wine without a headache. At Wine Attitude, I didn't even think they were that advanced though. Over no. There. Yeah. They have that. Oh, wine stick. attitude or, or total no, wines? No, not wine. Total wine. Sorry. Total wines. Like... Total wines. When I was there last, I saw that, and I got it because I'm like, I want to try it. Mm -hmm. I don't get a, I don't get a headache with wine, but one of our friends got it. I need to ask her. Yeah, because I, I mean, because like I, I don't mind the taste, but it's like literally, uh, I haven't even had Chardonnay since. For like well, six plus years. it's a white wine, and white wines are not very. Well, the sulfate, they still have the sulfate. The sulfate, which is but what even like. allergic to. I had had my daughter Nicole, and then when I first had like my first class, it was literally a glass. I was so sick the next day. Yep. Um, I had like the worst headache. I'm like, if I'm going to do this, I want to go all out and yeah. Yeah. drink yeah. a bottle. Yeah. 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 I want to get wow. wasted. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I want to dance the table. I'm not going to do it for one glass and of wine. Absolutely. <laughs> I'm like, come on now. No. So I think that's why I'm just like, I stick to vodka, beer, or, um, Champagne and that's beer is my drink. drug of choice. Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, yeah, that's my drug of choice all day long. Well, I like them all three. It just depends on my mood for that day. But when you come home and sit by the pool with a nice mm -hmm. gin and tonic short, I mm -hmm. do short, not a lot. I do a splash with a lime and just sit there and turn on my music and relax. Well, we've never had that when I was sitting by the pool. So I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> She's that. already like it. Was just like, where were it? Yeah, like, where's my invite? <laughs> She's an open invitation. But oh. Bombay Sapphire is a good gin too. I mean, like I said, maybe I need to try it again. I don't know a lot better. about liquor, so I'm not gonna yeah. betray that I do. I became during this quarantine. I became a uh, yeah. You I, you. I was literally like yeah. muddling yeah. and yeah. everything. Trying Grey to Goose. I love. That's my favorite. Oh, I love. Yeah. She loves no, Tito's. Tito's is my I don't like Tito's. You like Sorry, Tito's? Texas. I don't like Tito's. <laughs> I just give me some Texas Tito's and just chop me up yeah. some lemons in there. Oh my god. Tito's got a weird aftertaste to me. Like, I don't know. Don't say I do like with Tito's. I do raspberries, lemon, and mint. Muddle yeah. it up together uh -huh. with some club soda. Yeah. It is amazing. Yeah. I'm a Jim's the fruity type, so Jim likes the girly drink. <laughs> and 
I'm the sorry Jim. <laughs> He's like, thanks. Yeah. He's like five minutes in and she's already talking shit. <laughs> That's what he likes. Pineapple Malibu, pineapple Sprite. He yeah. likes those kind of things. He don't, he's not a drinker anyway, so yeah. he wants to enjoy the flavor. You know, me, mm -hmm. I enjoy like just a vodka and tonic or gin and tonic and some yeah. lime. Um, yeah. But LaCroix is good. Like if you drink that water. Yeah. Uh, I like LaCroix. Water, I mm -hmm. The lime, I use a lime one with my vodka. Or my yeah, so she's making drink. a skinny drink. Yeah, yeah. that's what you're doing. Yeah, I it's gotcha. It's cost effective. It's low calorie. That's what these are full of calories. You can't drink a lot of these. I know. I love it. She also, you know, they put a lot of calories on you, so you're gonna have to be careful with those. Like, <laughs> Dang, why did she have this? Oh, okay. you know what? Do you guys like red beers or no? Yes. Oh, I, that's my favorite. favorite. Oh, yeah. I love in Cancun, them. the year we went to Cancun, oh my god, I going back in, in three months. I couldn't stop drinking. Good. We, that price. We the might price. not. Well, no, but we might not come back. We'll be like, there'll be stars of us. Victoria was out naked, with, like <laughs> running around, like right around no beach. shame. Like when I'm out of town, I don't care. I'm you literally snapped like, by the paparazzi. Yeah, yeah, I'm like <laughs> from the beach with like all my wobbly bits hanging out. I just oh no, I, I'm self conscious. I don't want you to see what's under here. I'm going through to change your life, so. Oh, you I can't know you should that. come. We'll have fun, and you—it's a seven thousand dollar room for two thousand oh, dollars. because you, right now yeah. they're trying to re-stimulate. So yeah, it's amazing. It's as nice as the one we stayed with you, because yours, that hotel Musau, is nice. It was, it was very nice. It was, I definitely want to go back. It was away. like six hundred a night for those rooms. I don't even remember. Yeah, they were. It all kind of came together once yeah. all the wedding stuff. Oh, they were seven, uh, six something, six eighty or something a night for those rooms. Well, just like, like Desert View Homes. Thank you, Desert View Homes, paid for my trip because I won that. Oh no! Hold on, wait a minute. Sorry, maybe it was <laughs> carefree. She what a lucky! I, know. I was like, they won that car from Carefree that yeah. year. Like yeah. you guys are the luckiest uh -huh. people. You're like. Um, I think no, it was the, it was Carefree because I won the twenty five hundred dollar gift card from Carefree. Thank you. But then we went to Journey because I won a, a gift card for five hundred dollars for Desert View to the. Um, remember it then? It was. Um, the Hard Rock Cafe in yeah. Albuquerque, yeah. and we went to see Journey and stayed there. It was nice. Oh, that that's was cool. on Desert View, so we kind of blessed no. for all this real estate stuff. I love, I love the the Messiah and the Garza Blanca. Yeah. That's always like my yeah. favorite. Oh my god! So everyone's like, and I will always remember everyone asking me, "How did you know where to get married in this yeah. area?" And Justin's like, "Well, this is my way. What's the most expensive place in Mexico to get married?" Because <laughs> <laughs> it can't be that expensive. <laughs> Super high maintenance. Yeah, and I'm like, well, it yeah. is what it is. That's yeah, right. You and him are like me and Jim. We balance each other out. Yeah, He's easy going. Yeah, Jim's easy going, and they're man enough to handle women like this. Well, and I think too, they. I, I tell this life would be boring without us. Like, yeah, they wouldn't have the. Yeah, they would just exactly. be like for it. So it would bring excitement to their lives. I know. That's the whole point. You never know what the, you never know what's coming next. <laughs> Especially with her. Yeah. I know. So how's business been for you guys? Oh my God. I can't even complain. I am yeah. loving it. Awesome. Every day I'm in my office. These are things I pray for. Well, Every day listings office. are hot off yeah. the, like, you well, can't. Well, we, we're low. For the first time, I've been going on this September, will be seven years here in real estate. For the first time ever, we're in a seller's market. Yeah. And we're low in inventory because usually we have we have around 3,800 to 4,000 homes on the we market. We're extremely we're low. We're in the low 700s. Oh, mm -hmm. really? It was oh, like yeah. a perfect storm because remember before COVID, we had a, we were already starting to have a builder shortage because all the trades left the Midland because yeah. of yeah. Yeah, more, right? Because of the oil boom. And so we were already, that builder shortage was already spinning up even before COVID. But if any of you all, Paid attention to when Kobe Bryant died. Mm -hmm. In the paper, the same paper, they were already talking about COVID that far back. There were positive cases. Oh, I don't. I I had um, <clears throat> Alfonso Fuentes on yeah. one of mine, and he was saying how, as far back as November, yeah. December. He was the one that was saying, "I'm very paranoid about mm -hmm. COVID," and I'm like, "Yeah, it's not. Nothing's gonna happen." And then it's just crazy how it all. I have friends that said that too, and they were like, "Oh, it's just a flu. It's not just a flu." Whether you're conspiracy theorists or not, I don't know, but it's worse than the flu and it's spread faster than the flu, and so you you just gotta be. It's well, not being smart. It's I not just about think being that people are just it's dirty just, people. Yeah, exactly. And I think if and you wash your hands, yeah. um, and you're you supposed have, to wash yeah. your hands anyway. And stop 
always touching people. And coughing yeah. on people. Yeah, don't touch me. I don't even like yeah. shaking hands. <laughs> yeah, I'll hug you because I know you, but don't come up to me. <laughs> I don't know. If She's you don't a germaphobe. I well, and that, but that's what I mean. Like, even with the kids, because Lucas is going to summer camp, she's like, the the lady that was is running it, she's like, this is what you're supposed to do. You're not supposed to send your kid with a fever anyway. anyway and you have people that yeah. send their kids with fever. But here's the problem with that. One, you got some that just don't give a shit. Yeah. And two, you got some that don't have a choice. They yeah. got to go to work. They don't have sick leave. They don't have that. You know, our single moms, our single dads, or little Well, they should families. take something. Take Tylenol before they go to work because we don't want to give well, maybe that. they don't. You can't take Tylenol not to give it away. But, I mean, sometimes you just don't have a choice, which is so unfortunate. You know, and we have to advocate for those families for a different way to help them. Yeah. Well, and so that's the thing. They So they'll have, they'll check its temperature every time he goes and mm -hmm. stuff. But I'm like, that's what. And you know, wash your hands, but it's just good hygiene. Pretty yeah, much. absolutely. Yeah. It's like before you I eat, hope wash that, your hands. I hope what comes out of this is that. Yeah. Like, who's who's been in Circle K and noticed how clean your bathroom or to Walmart? I don't you use ain't that. Ever I, seen? I try not to use public. Well, listen, you know how much I pee all the time, but I don't have a choice. But if you've been in Circle K or Walmart bathroom, you know that it's the cleanest you've ever seen in your life right exactly. now. Exactly. And I'm like, I hope that. But they it should stay like that. that. Exactly. That's what I mean. Well, it should. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. If if it was fifth, we all be drunk. Um, yesterday I went to a house, uh, a tenant was moving out, so I have to put their house on the market for sale. And the lady is such like a Miss Nice Nasty type of woman, you know, she wears like Louis Vuitton, Gucci and stuff like that. And I go in the house and the Miss house dirty. is just... So you never know. Miss Nice Nasty, I haven't heard that <laughs> one. Oh, it's just horrible. You know, you see her on the outside like, hmm, she's got, got it together. together. You know, got a good job and everything, and I go in that house and I'm like, oh, I'm dying in here. <laughs> yes. It don't. It, listen, what I learned is it don't matter where you come from, mm -hmm. how much money you got, what color you yeah. are. It don't matter. What matters is how you was raised. Yeah. What values you was taught at the beginning. Mm -hmm. It really don't matter. I mean, when we look at that and we say, we're just all the same. If we can agree, I'm a white girl. If you can't tell. Carla's a white girl, if you can't tell. No, I'm black. <laughs> I love you are? the skin that I'm in. Oh, you, know, you are? I don't know. <laughs> but most people say me and Carla are reversed, that we got somehow reversed. That's true. Um, and, and we're just inside colors different. And then, of course, we have our beautiful Mexican mom over here. Full butt. Uh -huh. Full but, butt. Um, <laughs> but the thing is, we all want the same thing, right? We can yeah. agree oh, we want the same thing. Absolutely. We want to make as much money as we can mm -hmm. and live a good life. You want your kids to be safe and and have fun and have a great life. And you want your kids to be safe and have a good life. And I want my kids to be safe and have a good life. Why can't we just all do that? Like, yeah. Why can't that just be the principle that everybody adopts? But it's like, not. Just it's not. Human. It's not. It is the principle. But when you have so many people that want to hold another race down so that they can rise above then it's never going to be a justice platform. It's not going to be equality. But that's why it takes each one of us one person at a time to change the conversation. To that's say, a long time. Well, we got to do it. I mean, maybe one day our grandkids will have the benefit of that. Yeah. But here's the thing. As long as you refuse to sit and talk to another person that's different than you and understand their world and where they come yeah. from because it's out of fear or, again, out of rearing, right? Well, and I'm from the South. But I you think know too, what you everyone, taught. I mean, in the South. I, mean, I think too, everyone's so, um, they're so scared to voice their opinion. I agree. Because you don't know what response you're going to get. Like, well, you can't on social media anymore because no. damn if you do, damn if you and, don't. And I think that's the problem. You can't have intellectual conversations. No. It might not be the same. Yeah. It, People need to understand not everyone's going to have the same. And that's okay. And that's, that's what okay. makes us beautiful. Yeah. And now, I what you can't have, have, you you can have an have, opinion, but though. But you can't have an opinion on hurting people and oh, thinking yeah. hurting people is right. But I mean, about politics, about everything. Yeah. I'm just like, why can't you just have a conversation with somebody? I think and people can have a conversation, but when your point of view is so strong, like my sister is, is, hers is so strong, a lot of times I have to call her and say, Chastity, you got to come back. Because she's so passionate about the way she feels. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't post things like that on social media because I don't want well, we to. we got different political yeah. views. Well, here's the thing. We, got, we, don't, we don't have so much. It's funny because we don't have so much political views on what we want from our country. Yeah. We just have different views on who the best person is to bring yeah. to the country. 
And so we can agree again there. We all want low taxes, right? Yeah. Yes. We all want to not have to give all our money to the government mm -hmm. to then turn At around all. and kill somebody yeah. with the same money we're paying them to do that. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, I, I think it, it's hard to separate because it's like you, like the last, last election, we can all agree, we didn't have any choices. Like, who did you, who can, it was like, damn, it was a lesser of two evils. Yeah. Like, do you want this girl? I wanted to say the B word. On TV, <laughs> you know, that that's a dangerous family. Yeah. Make no mistake about it. In my heart, I believe I mean, it's a dangerous family. I mean, her husband is with Jeffrey Epstein. Like, I know. They are and they're they in all, all that yeah. stuff. And then you got this one that, okay, he's inappropriate. Like, I don't agree with the things he says, but I like the results he's getting. But he's a business As a bit from the yeah. business side, but I like the results. He can, I would not have him to handle my money on no level, not even $5. No. And at, no, not even if $5. If you won the lottery today, who would you, the first person you call to help you invest? Because we're at, four, what, $410,000 uh, right now? No, it's that? already done. Oh, God, check, see if I won. Uh, we didn't <laughs> win. It oh, was man. out of state. <laughs> businessman but I don't know if you guys have ever went to any of his hotels or anything like that when you travel it just feels dirty like you're feeling like that other family is so dirty going to his but do you think that now because of what you know of him no no, no I didn't I, he was him as a president I did think that before him I didn't even know he was because a lot run. of these places are luxury I'm not oh any it was them. horrible it was horrible I'm telling you guys it just felt like it was just gaudy and I never thought money was dirty because I love me some money, but I felt so well, dirty there. Dirty I felt not. so dirty, dirty mm -hmm. when yeah. I went to New Jersey there. When'd mm -hmm. you go? Um, back in 2008. Mm -hmm. So pre-presidency. Well, you know, Every, but here's the thing. Yeah. You want me to respect you, but you don't want to respect me. Yes. That's the problem. Exactly. Because I'm right and you're wrong. And if you don't agree with mm -hmm. me, then you're a bad person and your values are bad and you're bad. And you can't you can't have dialogue that way. No. You got to say, okay, I want to listen to you because maybe I'm getting it wrong. Maybe I should hear you out and say you got a point there, but that means you got to be intelligent and open minded to say. Yeah. I didn't think about that. Carla thinks I didn't think about how that made you feel because a yeah. post that I made recently totally agreeing with she thought I was agreeing with a point. Well, mine my point to the post was not agreeing with what he said. Well, what's the difference? Yeah. Well, that's the thing. 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 That's the it doesn't mean that I agree with her feeling, but I yeah. agree that it bothered her. And oh, I now her. that you tell me you don't agree with it, so you just took it down just no, so no, that no. my feelings wouldn't be no, hurt. No, no, no. <laughs> ah, you didn't really no. care about my heart. No, I do. That's why I removed it. What did, I'm you, saying did you is, understand that? What I'm saying is even know it was a misunderstood was. post. Yeah. Because my point to him was he was saying, what is the difference uh -huh. on black and black crime than a cop? on crime and mm -hmm. there's a big difference the difference is that cop was freaking paid to protect and serve by our tax dollars not to go out and kill people yeah. right and it doesn't matter it doesn't matter i don't care if they're innocent or if they're not innocent your your job as a cop isn't to put your freaking knee on somebody's neck for eight minutes and kill them yeah i mean that is not your job mm -hmm. and so she thought that I was agreeing with him on the black on black crime, but I was not. I was saying I don't agree with you saying it's the same thing. Yeah. It's not the same thing. What he done was wrong. Yeah. Right? And so, but I don't know that until she gives me her perspective. Right? Yeah. And think about how's this going to make Carla feel? But it didn't end her friendship, right? No, of course not. No. Because and I think, think that's we're the and I, yeah. Because this is a thing I know, like, and I hope she knows this too. I don't know if you do. But if I offend her, I hope she comes and talks to me. Oh, shoot. Bert's is oh, going yeah. and telling you, oh, Victoria Carla pissed me off. No. Because I'm going to go to her. You're full of shit. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Which is what I told her. I mean, we were yelling on the phone. I said, you're full of fucking shit. You know better. Yeah. Like, don't even come with me with that. You know better. Yeah. But if it makes you feel bad, I'll remove it because I love you. But you're full of shit to think yeah. if I agree with that. Yeah. You know? And then she was like, okay. So, yeah, and I think that that's what you have to do is you just have to be able to be civil and... I agree. And that's where, where trust and respect come from. Exactly. you trust somebody's intentions, right? Exactly. And, um, and, and that's, all, and that's think, all everybody wants. But here's the thing. You can't be out here 
running amok yeah. and, and think people's just going to listen to you mm-hmm. and respect you. you got to walk the walk and talk the talk. I exactly. agree. I agree. Period. I agree. Period. I agree. No, I agree. And I feel like... What's going on in Seattle today? Crazy. Yeah. And where's uh-huh. their leadership? Where, I mean, that's just... Hey, that ran. should not yeah. be allowed. It should not be allowed. I just feel like... I, I feel like we're in a very, like, PC. And I think, too, it's like the way we were raising our kids, too, to not yeah. be able to be tougher yeah and I think that you know not everything's gonna be very PC you know and yeah. I think everyone should be able to express how they feel and not get now the you're backslash. scared you might get shot for expressing yourself today well and then business people like there's a lot that goes into it mm-hmm. um, I think that you know you can't post whatever even Trump supporters they couldn't post that they voted yeah. for Trump that's why I think when he won people were so surprised because you weren't hearing people yeah it was a silent vote exactly yeah and I think, I, I don't... Which I, don't, I think is bullshit, too. I think they should have been able to say, hey... Yeah, and be I respected voted for, for their yeah. vote and not say, just because you voted for him, you yeah. got to be a racist or a yeah. bad person. That's not the truth. The thing is, is that we had two people of a choice. Mm-hmm. You had Hillary Clinton, you had him, and you had to really think on your values based on what's important to, to you, you yeah. which person would bring that value, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. My value for hiring the president is different than your value. Exactly. Carla and I come from military. She's a military spouse. I'm military. And so you got to look, for me, first of all, I'm looking at two things as a military service person and a business owner. Mm-hmm. First, who's going to help with those things, right? Who's reducing taxes on small businesses? Who's for small businesses? Yeah. Who's for the military and who's going to give the military the fucking money they deserve? Yeah. How is our military still making freaking peanuts and on our lower enlisted on freaking welfare? Yeah, that's I a, agree. That's, that's a horrible. shame. And they the there, yeah. yeah. Now, and and why do our our spouses have to go pay almost two damn thousand dollars for a root canal? You know, mm-hmm. that's ridiculous. I mean, the people that... If they serve our lives. Yes, yeah, that put their lives on the line. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's a choice. And I, and don't come with me with that BS that, well, you decided to do that. Yeah, we did for you. you right. And so, can they get paid what they're worth? I yeah. mean, they're, they're the... I, I, I don't want to go through. I don't want to go through. want to raise their hand to go get killed. I, hell I mean, no. That, I'm when not you do that. sign up, none of us think that's going to happen. I mean, no. you don't sign up saying, yeah, sure, let me go die today in yeah. Iraq or Afghanistan. But you don't, but, and but also, you know it's a possibility that you have to go to war to protect the country. And let's clarify the Constitution and what our oath is as soldiers and airmen and Marines and everything else for these people that's you know, all up in arms right now about how do we have the American military police in American towns. Mm-hmm. Well, well, I don't think, I think that's a little extreme. No, 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 I'm going to stop you because first of all, need, we so have you think it's a mean right, you think right now in Seattle, where that's, the that, okay, is there. But that's a little different from what was happening in D.C. But you got to protect the president. That's normal. Yeah. Well, Come on now. That's yeah, you sense. do have to protect that's him. You do. Sense. But nobody was out to kill him. But they don't matter. Nobody was out to that's cause their job. Their him. job is to protect the president. You right. can't shit on that's them for their right. job. But and so he they had like no business calling them into yes. action to come and protect him when there was no threat against him. But you don't know there's not a threat. Well, then so how you don't do I know? be safe or sorry? But right? That's what. Okay, why didn't he do that when they were in New York? Why didn't he do he that? He tried. That's the governor's choice. You can't as a president step on the governor. And they denied the help. So th- that's that thing. But he controls the White House, so that's his right. But now you got Anifta taking over a part of Seattle. Come on, where's the leadership? Yeah, bring in the freaking army and put their ass out of that that state. Yeah. There's no place for that. That's a hate group. Yeah. And one hate group ain't different from the next hate group. No, I if agree. If you hate though. on anybody totally in your hate group, then you. your ass should I be totally put in your place. I totally agree with you. Period. And and here's the thing. In the, in the South, there was a saying, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. That ain't the case. No. You can't want peace for one part yeah, and not no. have peace for the other part and say, well, that's, well, that's what you get. Mm-hmm. So tell me how long have you guys been friends in the business? We've been friends now at least five years. Yeah, about no, five, this four is twenty twenty. So we that was two thir- 2013. Well, you know, you met me in twenty fourteen. Okay. We really didn't get to know each other until I was a team leader, which was end of twenty fifteen. Oh, I loved her when she was the team leader for Keller Williams. I to me, you know, other people probably think differently. But she <laughs> took <laughs> No, for honestly, the most part, it, me and everybody thought the same. No, honestly. But you know, my personality is love yeah. or hate. But, and that's okay. but still, she's still the same to me, I yeah. think, right? 
But um, she took the time to call each agent into her office to get to know yeah. what they wanted for their business. Yeah. And then she and I started talking about military stuff. And ever since I left out of the office with her, girl, I've been rocking and rolling, you know? Just tweaking the concept. Yeah, everything. I mean, and I've loved her ever since. Aww. Mm -hmm. And then she was just one of my faves and um, going to, you know, Kelly Weems events together. and Well, it's funny, too, because you guys have very direct personalities. Mm -hmm. You guys are both very direct. I yeah. think you're direct, too. Yeah. I am. We all three are the same. <laughs> I'm like, I am. It, you can definitely tell if yeah. I don't like you. Yeah. <laughs> and here's the thing. Isn't it a beautiful thing? I love that commercial. I don't remember what company it was that did that, the commercial, but where you could tell somebody exactly what you were thinking about yeah. and it was okay, and they were like, okay. Yeah. Right? Wouldn't it be such... I don't know. I like I like to know where I stand. I'd rather know. I don't like fake. Like, but I re I can still respect you in the industry. Yeah. And not really like you. I don't have to hang out with you. Like we don't have to hang out with each other to respect each other. Yeah. I don't have to like your personality to respect you as a person. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. You know, it's okay. That just doesn't mean we're not going to be best friends. But it's okay. Doesn't mean I I don't love you and I don't respect you as a business person or don't think. You know, there's one particular lender that I don't particularly like their attitude, but they're an amazing loan officer. Yeah. And you can't take that away. Well, I'm not here to be friends. I'm, I'm just <laughs> not. I'm, I'm just not. I'm going to tell you the truth. I don't need any more friends. I have yeah. enough on one yeah, But hand. you still respect the people. And I respect, yeah. I respect yeah. everyone. Yeah. Even yeah. though I may not like them, I'm, I still respect them. Yeah. Now, I'm not going to speak to everyone if I don't like them. Yeah. But I'm going to yeah. respect them. Yeah, and I'm think, nod and I'll speak, but I'm not going out. I'm not going to nod. You know, I'm not going to lie like to one, you. We got one company owner here that just goes out of their way to make try to make people uncomfortable when you know that y'all hate each other. Who? I ain't gonna say who, but have you saw that TikTok? Like, which one? Girl, have you heard? <laughs> I was like, which one? What did I do now? I was like, what did I, I do like, now? We it's so much gossip. Everybody's talking about everybody. I'm you like, know? I, I just and then they say who, and then they look at each other. <laughs> yeah, me and you. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, girls, two people in this office is gossiping about everybody. Have you heard? And she was Ooh. like, girl, who? She was like, me and you. <laughs> <laughs> but who? Everybody needs a ride or die they can gossip with. Gossip, ain't, gossip is bad if you make stuff up. So in the South, gossip means for us, yeah. it's not bad. For us, it means you just talking about what happened. Mm -hmm. Girl, did you, you hear what so-and-so's husband did or so-and-so's wife did or so-and-so's kid did? Yeah. It's like you just talking about what happened. Yeah. But I think gossip around the world as a whole, as I understand it, because my husband had to teach me this. Or maybe I taught him because he was like, man, you and Carla gossip a lot. I said, no. Me and Carla don't gossip a lot. Me and Carla discuss a lot. Yeah. Because it, as a whole, gossip means you making shit up about people or uh -huh. hurt people, right? Yeah. And you just spread and you're taking one fact. And you might add two more facts to it before you tell somebody else. Yeah. But for us, you but know, let me get this straight. You need we to, don't you gossip need about if somebody's husband and wife is cheating. That's not our business. We don't give a shit. Yeah. yeah. We don't talk about that. We're only talking about what's going on in our circle and yeah. our world. Yeah. So well, what you think or the world? Yeah. You know what do you think about that? You know, and a lot of times, me and her don't agree. Me and her come from different backgrounds. Yeah. I don't understand Carla as as raised in her struggle as a black woman. And Carla don't understand me as a poor white girl, you yeah. know, because it's different things and we all have our own struggles. And, you know, that's why I say you got to get to know everybody because everybody's story is different and they're exactly. a beautiful story and they're beautiful people. You know, you say, who would you call today if you needed something, yeah. right? You can count on people on your hand other mm -hmm. than my sister, my husband, right? I don't have a mom to call. If I called Carla today, she would be there. Yeah. You know, and that's what it's about. And people just miss that. We're all, the, we're all human. We're all the same. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. And I think, I think like with, like what you were saying with people, I can respect, I, I deal with a bunch of different yeah. people the same and I can respect why they are the way that yeah. they are. And I might not be everyone's cup of tea, but I appreciate what they do and yeah. everything to that. And I think we're all human beings. Yeah. We're not all, yeah. not everyone's going to be friends. It's exactly. And it's goes. okay. That's like, I remember I had this one girl one time and she just assumed, um, she was black and we're in the army together good friends but she assumed before she got to know me that i was white that i must have had a great life right uh -huh. and like you don't understand because you're white and you were given everything and i was like what the <laughs> i 
Let me tell really you. Yeah. Like, like, listen to my story. Yeah. And then when I listened to her story and she listened to mine, we were like, oh my God, we were younger. So you, you know, when you're younger, you think differently. And I was like, you know, I was raised by a single mom. Yeah. I, we lived in a little single mobile home. And I remember my mama, we would sleep on a mattress in the kitchen with the stove on, with yeah. the stove open. And that's how she heated us. And so people say, oh, you, I don't, I don't know that saying. Yeah. I don't know the saying. And even in my family, you know what's interesting is um, me and my cousins were talking, right? Yeah. Even, and I told them, and we were talking about privilege and stuff, and I said, well, privilege is different everywhere, right? Yeah. A black family that's a husband and wife like you and Miguel, right? Well, Miguel wasn't, I mean, he's mixed, but uh, say if your husband was black, your kids had a great life, right? They had some privilege a poor white family didn't have, yeah. per se. And, you know, this was a conversation that we were, we were watching the other day on TV, and we were just trying to dissect it and say, what does it mean to different people? And somebody asked, why do you get offended when somebody says you, you, you come from privilege? Because I don't understand what that means. What yeah. does it mean to come from privilege until somebody broke it down and was like, well, just because when you walk in a store, you're not automatically assumed that you might be stealing or something. Yeah. That's a privilege, right? Because to me, privilege means you grew up in a good house with money and yeah. opportunity and you didn't have to worry about anything. And I said, well, you know, I come from a, a affluent family. Yeah. Um, the Calhouns, you know, John C. Calhoun was my great granddaddy to the 10th power. Not that that's a great thing because we know what he, you know, what his value was, but that's not my value. But if you just take me, I can only count for my mom and me, right? Yeah. And so my mom was a single mom working two and three jobs to make sure me and my sister had what we had. Um, and so even within our own race, we have different levels of status that you have to fight for, you know? Like, I, I was a popular girl in school, but it wasn't because my mama was a doctor or a lawyer like yeah. the other kids, right? But you know what I had different than them is my mama loved me. My mama taught me values. My mama cared for me. We had a clean house. Yeah. And I knew what love was. And I knew what it was to be kind to people because she taught me kindness and how to help, you know, help all people. Yeah. And so, and then my friend that, whose daddy was a doctor was always gone. Yeah. And she acted out. And so you say, well, would you rather have money or would you rather have values? And sometimes that's a difference. And, you know, my cousins and I were talking and, and I was like, well, even you were more privileged than me because her daddy and mama were, she had a mama and dad that stayed together. She had an amazing mom and dad. She had a dad that made a ton of money. And I mean, shit, her first car was a Corvette. Yeah. A white, beautiful Corvette like Barbie had that we could only dream about that you saw in the, at Walmart in the, in the freaking pack that I couldn't have yeah. because my mom couldn't buy me a Barbie car, you yeah. know? And so I was like, you, you, that's how, that's how the dialogue happens though. To be open to yeah. say, you know what, shit, maybe you did come from a different thing or, yeah. you know, in the South is different than being in Chicago or Florida or Seattle. And that, but I'm where I grew up, you originally from? I'm a, really, I'm a Texas girl, She's a Texas right? Girl. But I don't think that, okay, so for example, me, I didn't grow up with a silver spoon in my mouth or anything but like you that. Created but I had a, silver I had a spoon. I had a big family, and we never had to worry about eating. We never yeah. had to worry about anything. Your so my, took care right, of my right? cousins were my best friends. Mm -hmm. They're like my siblings to me. Yeah. So us too. I don't remember ever not having anything to eat. I don't. My mom and dad was just great people. My grandma was just great. My aunts yeah. and uncles. So if somebody comes to me from a poor standpoint. I just don't think that, I think it's just humble beginnings. Yeah. I don't think it's like they're poor just because they had to, just like you had to heat your house with a stove. So what? That's the easiest, efficient way to, to warm a house. Yeah, but it changed your perspective and it changes your experience in life because somebody having to sleep on a mattress in their kitchen yeah. with a stove on than somebody in a dice brick two-story house down the road. I guess I just don't think they're people different. I don't care if you were No, no, it's not that we different. Still love it you shouldn't be. No. It shouldn't right. be different. That's not what I'm saying. I'm just saying you have to understand what, what shaped a person and what experience. If if I grew up in a, you know, this is, a, this is one of the most revelations I ever had in my Army career as an Army leader. Uh-huh. I had this female, she was married, and um, her husband beat her and her uncle molested her kids. We're gossiping now. 
this ain't gossip. This is how you understand people's background. Yeah. And because how you assume just because on your value when you place up your value on other people. Yeah. To me, I was like, what the hell is wrong with you? Why are you still there? Why would you let him beat you? And why would you let your uncle molest your kid? Yeah. One, why would you have kids if you already knew this was the type of family you had? And why would you bring yeah. them in there? And it was the most humbling moment for me when she looked at me and said, First Sergeant, that's my normal. My uncle molested me. My uncle molested Damn. my cousin. My uncle molested my sister. Oh my she said, that's what I grew up in. That's my normal. She said, I understand it's not your normal, but it's my normal. Everybody's normal's different, y'all. Yeah. And we have to, we have, I'm passionate about that because we have to talk and we yeah. have to understand that. Because I didn't, because that's what my value. Yeah. I was pushing my value on her, trying to get her to leave her husband. That yeah. was her safety. Yeah. You can't do that to people. We all have a story. Mm -hmm. And until you until you are humble enough to understand the story, yeah. we can't move forward. No, it's you know? the truth. It's just it's the truth. Yes. And so I think to do that, but you have to care about people on a human mm -hmm. level and say, I, I don't see the color. I see past that. Carl is a woman. And as a woman, we have our own different struggles. Yeah. And you have to help her as a woman, you know? And so... I just get mad about that because I knew how I was raised and how much my mom struggled and you know make sure that me and my it's a wonder listen yeah it's a wonder that me and my sister this is probably as raw as y'all ever gonna see me um well that's all the point of us I love it yeah. um it's a wonder me and my sister are saying it's a wonder that um we're successful as we are but that's 100% because of my mama right yeah and um and she died 11 years ago, out of the blue at 53 years old. And that sucks. But um, she, um, we used to have shootouts in our front yard. And people, you know, and again, when I talk about this privilege, right, and you're white, you must have had a great life. Yeah. My daddy and my uncle, my mama's brother, would have shootouts in our front yard. They would shoot at each other with shotguns. They would hide behind the pine trees and shoot at each other. Over a 25, 25 cent poker game, y'all. When people ask me how I was raised, I'm like, I was raised like the freaking wild, wild west. Yeah. Like, all I knew was fighting domestic violence and shooting. And then my sister, sorry, continue. My sister says, don't tell people that. You make us sound like hoodlums. <laughs> <laughs> because my sister's real prim and proper and, you know, beautiful and conservative. She's opposite of me. Yeah. And um, but I'm think, still beautiful, but she's No, beautiful, I think but, it, it's. The way people, it, it's, they know a different side of you guys. Yeah. Because I feel yeah. like sometimes, too, they meet, they meet you guys and they're like, the hell? Just they're like, here. well, I'm like, I'm just going to say it, you know? Yeah. They're like, oh, they're being bitchy to me. Like yeah. They, you know? And I think that once. Did people say that about us before? Yeah. Really? I mean, that's our. They think that I'm bitchy? Oh, yeah. They think that we're just. Oh, no. Why didn't you tell me this a long time ago? Well, I well think, here's the thing: you gotta own your personality. Yeah, and I think, but they can say, they say the same thing about me. Yeah. Listen, I work hard. I don't work. And sorry, Chassie, is no offense. This is my thing. Yeah. I work hard, and I don't work hard to just push no little Toyota Rav fours or nothing like that. I work hard for my kids. That that is my big why. But yeah. I think, I, but I think that's the whole thing. People don't understand the. They don't have the conversation, so they're not yeah. like, oh, they don't that's know why you. You she's don't know got you. the tough, and she's like, yeah. very you know like headstrong you know about doing that. Who knows? People think that we're like that. I mean, people say that. I mean, but, but here's the thing. About me too. I don't. I don't. Honestly, I'm at the point. I don't care about what other people. A poor think. person exactly. can't teach me how to be rich. I need yeah. to be around people like me. Well, you are so a population of five people you hang around with. If you're smart, you understand that. And if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong mm -hmm. room. And I'm gonna give credit here. And people, you know, I had a broker call me not too long ago and say, "Why Keller Williams? Uh -huh. What's so great about Keller Williams?" Mm -hmm. And you can do your volume here for cheaper. Uh -huh. And I said, well, see, that's a mentality shift because I can't do my volume there cheaper yeah. because you can't teach me how to be better. And number one, Keller Williams, Gary Keller is the only um, uh, owner that I know that has come out and talked about Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Uh -huh. So yeah, he has if, been if only she, one if, if really she is over there with Keller Williams, 
it's because it's a value and if that yeah, principle value it, it, yeah. yeah that principle cannot be exceeded no other and no other brokerage yeah and i feel I like i feel like the brokerage stuff, it all depends on you as a person no it's too. individual 100 yeah. percent. so this is what i tell everybody yeah i even when i was a team leader at keller williams yes i'm pro keller williams because i work there yes common sense but here's the thing she has drank the kool-aid oh i'm all in but here, make no mistake about it, if a brokerage pops up today that's better than Kelly Williams for me yeah. and my business model, yeah. I would leave. No. But there's not. There's not anybody. Well, else. I have to tell you, my brokerage, but Tropicana, it, I mean. Well, he's amazing. My, but builder, is my builder is so amazing. I could not see myself in But she's Kelly Williams. Because Mexico. of that. No. I, Keller Williams, the values, the core values uh -huh. that they have that's me yeah that's 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 my blood yeah but as far as my builder here being with a brokerage in texas i don't think i could be with anybody else except for randy he yeah. is just an awesome guy yeah. and he i think awesome. you have to do what fits best for exactly. what what works for you because it's exactly. not gonna work for everyone everyone's exactly. got their different why and why they want to yeah, do exactly. different things so that's why it gets me because you just said the the most important thing of the conversation when interviewing a broker when I tell people to interview, when they say, when I'm interviewing a broker, what should I ask? Because I don't know what I don't know. Yeah. And so my thing is, one, you got to know what you want. Mm -hmm. What's your business plan? Which, let's, let's be real here. Most people don't get in real estate thinking they're a business owner and the CEO of their own business. They get in it because somebody they told them easy how money. easy money and how much money they can make. And then they still choose a broker with an employee mindset. Yeah. Thinking, how much can you pay? Can you pay for my signs? Can you pay for my leads? Yeah. Can you pay for my marketing? That's not a business owner. That's an employee mindset. What can I get from you? And then you being within the constraints of that. Here's the thing. If somebody's paying for your signs and their number's on the sign, that ain't your business. And plus that, that business. to me, that's a poor man's mentality. Well, and, and you know, that's what I tell our agents, too, because yeah. our agents are their own yeah. agents. They're making they're, their own They're independent like, contract. And I have to tell people, it's not, you're not being an insurance agent. You're your own insurance agent. You're yep. building your book. You're building your own residual income. This is not a nine to five type of thing. Yeah, this absolutely. Is, it's exactly. your career. And I feel like a lot of times people get into things like, okay, I'm off at five or, or yeah. I just want to be nine to five, but I want to get a raise. I want to do this. Yeah. But if you don't hustle yourself, then you're not You ain't willing be, to put in the exactly. work, so why should I? Exactly. When you choose a broker. And it has if, nothing to do with the broker. It has to do with you. Exactly. Absolutely. This is what I say. When you're exactly. choosing a broker, you're choosing a business partner. Exactly. So you got to, one, know your own business. And what you want. Do you want to exactly. do flips? Do you want to do exactly. new construction? And all of it's spot commercial. But you exactly. have to say, okay, where's. Exactly. You have to be, first of all, humble enough to say, hey. I don't know it all, and yep. I feel like the younger generation does it. Yeah. And I feel like you have to say, I don't know it all. Who's going to be the best mentor for me to learn? Yeah, who's got the best education to learn? Yeah, the best exactly. technology. Yeah, exactly. And, if and it's not going to, like I said, it's each, it, yeah. with real estate, that's the beautiful part. There's yeah. so many different entities. So There is. There's so many things. So somebody might want commercial, like you said, somebody might want flips. But it starts with asking the right questions from the right people and not just saying, I'm going to go over here because they're the cheapest place. Because yeah. But not only the questions, guys, it's dedication. If you are not dedicated, you're not motivated, your own business, right? Yeah. Then working for anyone else is just not gonna work. Yeah. So you can ask for the world, but the the world can be given to you. Yeah. But you're gonna see your true self mm -hmm. if you're not motivated or dedicated to do what you yeah. wanna do. This girl asked me, she said, she said, Okay, Chassie, tell me, how did you really sell 181 homes last year? She was like, How much how much you pay for leads? <laughs> And I was like, what? I was like, I didn't pay for leads. What are you talking about? She's like, nah, nah, come on now, be real. She was like, how much did you pay? Oh. Like, who, who do you use? And I'm like, like, how do you take it? Like, is that an insult or is that like, yeah. I can't do it? And I said, no. I said, and that's the same one that kept asking me why Keller Williams. And I said, you remember how you always ask me why Keller Williams? I said, that's why. Because Keller Williams taught me how to lead generate. They taught me scripts. They taught me business conversations to be able to convert 181 leads uh -huh. that I that I generated. Yeah. That I built through lead generation, through conversations. I said, that's why Keller Williams, I said, you can't do that. Your conversation is how many leads do I need to buy to get there? And that's why Keller Williams and not you. Yeah. She never asked me that again. Well, and I think, well, because you and your husband work together. Mm -hmm. How does that go? Yeah. Because oh. a lot of people can't work with their spouse. 
It's tough. I mean, it is really tough to work with your spouse, but the key to it is having your defined roles, which me and Jim still don't, and we overlap a lot of time, and, and Jim and I have different perspectives, but that's also what makes it beautiful. So, again, it's all mindset. Everything we do every day from treating somebody human to yeah. treating somebody a certain way in business is about your mindset uh -huh. and what you want and are you equally yoked. You know, the Bible talks about being equally yoked and people assume that's religion. It's not religion. Not at all. It's talking about being equally yoked in your values and what you want. Yeah. Or if you're from the South like me, equally yoked means being the same color. <laughs> And not be marrying somebody out because, yeah. you know, everybody knows I love darker color, right? I've never been attracted to too many white guys. It's always, I like dark skin. I like. Well, I don't think know. that means equally yoked either. I think it's all mindset. I think it's all it's mind all, and that's value. What I'm it has saying. nothing to do with color. No, it doesn't. That's what I'm saying. Equally yoked means, again, mindset. If you're equally, if your values are, yeah. are the same, right? And so this is the conversation I had with my daughter dating, right? Are you equally yoked with him? Yeah. Are y'all equally yoked in your values? What's his 5, 10, 20 year plan? What's your 5, 10, 20 year plan? And is it equally yoked? Yeah. And if it's not, then don't waste your time. And that's what dating is for, to understand that. And, but you know, most young girls don't know that because they're not well, taught they're not that. Taught that yet. Well, and I feel like when, when we say we go back, it's values. It's how you're taught. Parenting is the most important job you'll ever have in your it life. Is. But I feel like a lot of times... And I and like and you guys can correct me with boys and girls. I have a son and a daughter. I've seen this throughout my 34 years of living. Guys are just programmed a lot more selfish than women. Women yeah. are very empathetic. They feel mm -hmm. bad. Guys, they don't give a shit. No, most of them don't. I'm not saying it, it, not give a shit about certain things, but most and of the time. they're oblivious to it. Yes. So, like, their focus is on if they're going to go to a certain school, if they're going to do a certain career, they're very yeah. focused. They can have a girlfriend, yeah. but they're very focused. Women, they'll start changing but the way. But they adapt based on the, what exactly, they have to do. And that's what I tell a lot of people. Oh, sorry, baby. Um, it's like, they're, it's just because it's a completely different gender. Mm -hmm. and they, like, run a different way. And I feel like a lot of times, a lot of, and like I said, I'm, I'm controversial, so, but I feel like a lot of times these girls get in these relationships so young, mm -hmm. and they really don't know what they're signing right. up for. Right, and they haven't right. figured themselves yeah. out. And, yeah. and absolutely, and then they're starting to please, wanting to please yes. this guy. Yeah. So now they're stifling their growth. And they don't even yeah. know what right. they want. Absolutely. Because yeah. 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 I, I, I mean, honestly, and I will... I'm, I'm glad about it, but, yeah. you know, in my high school days, no one was looking for us at me. You know, yeah. I was like, Josie Grossi from, from uh, Never Been Kissed, like yeah. with the braces and the, right. and the whole thing. But, you know, I went to the college. I, went, I was very focused because no one was giving was me that. Different. Right, exactly. And, and, and if you had, if, if, if that would have been that. different. If, if, I, I, if I would have had a little bit of To be boy crazy, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, if you'd been absolutely. hot like you are now, <laughs> you know, you like me, but you hot now. But what I'm saying, if you'd been hot now, you'd have had distractions, which is. I would have had a ton. And I wouldn't have been, mm -hmm. I wouldn't have gone, I would have totally been like, oh, yeah. well, my boyfriend really wants to go to this school, so I'm going to apply here. Exactly. And it just wouldn't have given me the time to have, yeah. you know, and I feel like any anyone that's female or male, I feel like, don't date in high school, even in college. Have fun. It's your time. I that's what I'm telling with you. Kids. I, I did not want Because I think they want, they think, okay, yeah. I'll get a relationship, but they don't understand a relationship. The implications the responsibility. Of that. The responsibility, exactly. It's a great thing, but I, I it's feel like. It's beautiful later. And, and, and I exactly. tell my kids, wait, you got plenty of time. Right. Why do you need somebody? Frolic. Have fun. Well, because I feel like now. I don't feel like I missed out on anything. You yeah, know what I mean? Exactly. I'm not that mom at the club that's like, well, I got pregnant super young. I did this. It's like, I had that time, yeah. so I'm going to be boring. Yeah. Well, like, you, you, know, I, you know, I was 30. Jim, people assume that Jim's my second marriage um, because I have a kid, but Jim's my first husband, and I was 30 when I married Jim. Yeah. I was thirty. I was 23 when I had Jaden, but for me, Jaden was, was the most important thing to me, mm -hmm. and so you don't... Where we're from, you don't introduce people yeah, to, to your kids children. that aren't yeah. that aren't serious, right? Yeah. And there's another lesson to parents is every time you date somebody and they leave, it's a loss to your kid. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. Don't bring a man don't, don't tell your children's but here, life. As women, we all, again, here's the thing. As women, we all want the same thing. We want the prince because that's the story we've been told through school, and we want the good daddy for our kids, right? And so, unfortunately, these single moms hold on to that and say, well, maybe him because he's promising me, and I'm so, 
I want it so bad that maybe this is the one. That's a whole nother episode. But you know what? I was different. My dad, but me and my brother, uh, me and my brother are like 18 months apart, but my dad used to get us in the car on Saturday mornings and ride us through the projects. Uh huh. And he used to tell my brother, you want to be like that? Don't do anything with your life. See, even um, her experiences. You, you, yeah. you want to you know, do this? Do, her, her dad so was smart. I already knew. You're like, I, I don't want I'm to. I'm saying, I'm like, I don't do the struggle. <laughs> yeah, I don't you either. Tell me not to do I'm something? not trying to help lift no man up. Yeah. I'm not trying to help you yeah. do anything. If you don't come correct, don't have a little money in your pocket, Carla ain't going to See, her dad way. taught her that. That's a value. Yeah. That's a value. And we are lacking that right now in teaching our kids value. Your kids cannot be anything they want to be. That's a farce. No, and you're your not always going to be happy. Yeah, you're not, you're not, gonna not always going to be happy. Everything's not given to you. You no. have to work for it. And we are killing our society by teaching our kids that they that they're brats. Kids today are freaking. They brats. are, especially. You know what my daughters used to say with their dad? Dad, mom's a gold digger. Mom's a dope gold digger. They know I didn't. I'm not gonna be with your dad if he's broke. No. Uh uh-uh. uh. But that's her You're value. You're not broke. Why would you, you better take your ass that's out her of value. Why does that matter? But there's women that'll say, "Oh, she's a gold digger and talk shit." Why does that matter? Why does it matter? That's her. That's Carl's personal preference. That yeah. doesn't matter. Who well, cares? Well, I think you have to be honest with yourself. And First. if you if you are accustomed to a certain yeah. lifestyle. Then why would you want to? You're just gonna make that. Why you gotta lower it because this person says you should. It's the same thing as saying you should get married and have kids in America. If you don't want to get married, don't get married. If you don't like kids, don't have kids. Amen. Amen. No, and I just feel like with with that situation, it's like you don't want to force somebody who doesn't want to do it. It's okay if you're fine with the just not. I you totally yeah, exactly. agree. And so you're like, I don't want to meet somebody that I'm constantly having to push, you know? And that's and that's fine. Yeah. But I feel like you have to, if you're wanting a certain lifestyle, and you, then you have to meet someone with that same goal. I agree. Like, that's it's right. Like, you're equally yoked. Yeah. It's yeah. like common sense, but common sense isn't so common. Yeah. It's like, I, I can't get it. I always, I always say, my mama was super street smart, not book smart, but super street smart. So I always say I'm hyper competent. Uh-huh. Because like, I can call in a minute, right? I might can't teach an economics class, but I can teach you about money and common sense. Yeah. Um, but it, it might it not it might not be through calculus, right? But um it is crazy. I mean, we just we all have the same struggles. We have the same struggle as women. Mm-hmm. We have the straight same struggle as parents, right? That's trying Absolutely. to struggle. And that's the kind of stuff we need to connect with in America. Yeah, for sure. And as agents, because I have an agent call me and just treat me like crap just because you're on the other side. We're in it for the same thing. Our goal is to close. Like, can we and do a you know the thing about Chastity and Jim, which I just totally love. Last year, I said, um, guys, I need to sell two houses. I need to make yeah. my quota. I can call them. And there you are. Did I ever yeah. tell you that? Mm-mm. Did I ever tell you thank you? No. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, but we're, as realtors, we have our own culture. Yeah. And we're not against each other. We're, we should be one and teaching each other to be better. But don't come in my office thinking that you are smarter than me because mm, 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 yeah. no way. But that's how they tr- we treat each other. We got to change it. I don't treat you that. like that. No, no, no. Uh-huh. I'm just saying. That's how realtors treat each other. Like we're the enemies. We're not. We're one. That's a culture in itself. Here's the thing. It's so beautiful. You know, black culture is a culture in itself. Mexican culture is a culture in itself. White has got a ton of cultures. Black's got a ton of culture. Asians got a ton of. Don't tell the Japanese they Chinese. They'll cut your throat. Yeah. I mean, it's the same for every single culture. We got our socioeconomic cultures within the culture, and your values within the culture, and so. Just understand it and love it. In in realtor culture, understand and love the realtor and let's help each other. The better we are together, the better we are as an industry. So what advice do you guys have? Or, you know, I'm going to start with this question. Uh, What's something that somebody doesn't know about you, Carla, that most people don't know about you? No, I have a big heart. And... (laughs) I'm whispering in her ear. I have, I have a big heart, and I may seem hard on the outside, uh-huh. but I'm a mushy marshmallow, marshmallow on the inside. Yeah. I really am. But she ain't no punk. That's the difference. Oh, no, I'm not, not no punk, punk at all, because I will pop off in a heartbeat. <laughs> ready, ready. Oh, my God. You're hilarious. 
And how about you, Chastity? <laughs> Shoot, I think that I just was so vulnerable during this that everybody already knows. You know? Well, I think we're pretty, like, open books. Yeah. But is there something that someone doesn't know about you? Mm-hmm. My first degree is in fashion merchandising. Oh, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. I didn't even know that. Mm-hmm. I went to school in Atlanta. That was my first degree. And then I have a master's degree in marriage and family therapy. So I did marriage and family therapy and parenting. Um, God, that is so hard to believe. I, guys, marriage counseling and marriage and family. She didn't take anything to heed. With <laughs> Why do you say that? She, you think I'm rowdy, rowdy. <laughs> what, with my kids? <laughs> tough? Yeah, that ain't got nothing to do with therapy. I'm a tough mom. <laughs> Why do you say All that? All the way tough. Tell them what you think about me as a mom. Like can I just tell? Can I tell a story really yeah. quick? So her son had a girlfriend, right? Uh-huh. And he didn't clean his room. So she went in his room to check his garbage can to make sure it was clean. You bless my son. So she found <laughs> something in the garbage can that she didn't like. Okay. Oh, my God. I can't tell. Oh, my God. He had to break up with his girlfriend because guess what? He didn't have anything to do with this in the garbage. It was the girlfriend that made him do it, okay? It so was. Now, now he doesn't have a girlfriend anymore because mom doesn't play that, okay? It was. But that's the thing about parenting. See, another story that OPP. it don't matter where you come from, we all share the same stories about our kids, right? And so, no, it wasn't just about that. She wasn't the right girl, period. And yeah. so we just had a conversation about being equally yoked. And he made the decision that they weren't equally yoked and he broke up with her. I just, it took mom teaching him and reminding him. Mom showing him. <laughs> <laughs> no, see, she has you doing this, son. This is not what I taught you. Yeah. It's her fault that she exactly. made you do this. Exactly, pressured him, my baby. I got four babies that are 16 to 26, but I don't know. Um, those are some things that people don't understand. That I've been in the Army 24 years. If you didn't know that, I'm still a reservist serving. Um, I'll be a commence art major this year. And um, part of that directness and that business comes from that because that's a different culture in itself. Army is a different, whole different culture. And so sometimes all of us are made up of multiple cultures and we have, you know, we're interwoven in that and we move from one to the other. When I come off of my Army duty, my team knows I need 72 hours to adjust because I need to adjust from being a soldier yeah. to adjust to being back as a civilian Brilliant. team leader. Well, thank you guys, and I hope you enjoyed it. Goodbye.